What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals and in today's video we're going to be going behind the scenes with New Sky Productions. This is a shoot that I did yesterday that we're going to be tearing down later this week but it's basically a tent setup and there's a bunch of props in there for a military op room basically and I'm going to go through all of the lighting, the audio, all the props that we did, all the camera setup, all the lenses, everything like that right after I show you the footage. So let me roll that right now and then we'll get into the behind the scenes. So starting off with a quick set tour, we have our tent here. On the other side is the white psych, which you'll see when we walk through. But if we go over this way towards the door, which we just have pulled back, we do close this because we want to be able to shoot 360, which I'll show you once we get in here. Uh, this is where all the magic happens. So we have four walls. Again, we have this corner, but that rolls out. So we kind of cover up all of the stuff out there and we can shoot a complete 360. On the floor, we have sound blankets because this is a white psych. So we wanted it to be black and dark. We didn't want it to really pop or lighten up anybody. And we also wanted to keep our footsteps a little bit quieter. So we use these so that when we're walking on it, you don't really hear any noise. We got our table in the center. We got our overhead lighting with our practicals and then our key light. And then we just have a bunch of props set up around the room. These are the clothes that our actors were wearing in the shots. And then we have just some more boxes and crates. We also have the hazer going to get us that really nice atmosphere. And then we have some more drapes on the wall just to add a little bit of texture. This is just that paper packing stuff. And we've just thrown that up just again to add a little bit of texture and depth to the wall. Going out the back, we also cut a slit in the drop cloths here. And then this goes out to another light, which is bouncing on the back and just giving some light fill from this side. Now, how we actually rigged up this overhead and the drapes all around the side is we have C-stands in each of the corners. And then we have obviously a ton of sandbags on them just because this is a lot of weight and it's gonna pull it down. And then we have all of the fabric clipped into the grip heads. So you can see it's just tightened down on that. And then that runs out to anchor points that are all along the wall. So we have four of these anchored in each of the corners, so there's no chance that this fabric is gonna collapse down. As far as connecting the two drop cloths, because there is one on top, it's a four foot panel and 30 feet long. We have two of them. We just did some Gorilla Tape on the outside and that seemed to hold it together well enough. This one we actually put some hot glue in because it was gonna have an action where the main character came in through this door so we didn't want it to fall apart and the tape wasn't quite sturdy enough for that. So we ended up hot gluing this all the way down and makes it really solid. If we had a little bit more time, we probably would have hot glued around the whole thing because it looks a little bit cleaner and it does hold it together quite a bit better, but we didn't have much time so using the tape was a good quick solution. And now we're back around to the front side so you can see where we sort of started. Same thing on the other side, just a little bit narrower, so I'm not gonna walk in there. Now we'll head back in and we'll take a look at some of the props that we got because there were a ton of props for the setup to really sell the look. We had everything from big crates like this. We have a bunch of them here and then we just have them raised up using the light panels, Gemini cases, as you can see again over there. But we have a bunch of these crates and a ton of outfits, like I pointed out. We have helmets, we got hats, knee pads, scarves, um, some small little things like a flask, compass, some rank badges, uh, just some more pouches, shovels, a bunch of random things like that. There's a backpack over here, uh, some more ammo cases, and a lot of this was all just picked up from an Army-Navy surplus store that was nearby. Some of it was owned by one of the guys who worked here at New Sky. And then again, some more fabrics and textures. This is just like a hemp fabric, just to add a little bit of texture and interest into the shot instead of just a plain box. Now to get all of these in the background so we could actually see them, we threw them up on either Apple boxes or you see we have the light panels cases down here and we don't actually see those cases underneath so it doesn't really matter what it is. We're mostly covering people up on the top here, covering their faces. So we wanted to get these high enough in the background that we could just see the top of them to really build the scene. And then in the corners, we just threw in some of these two by fours and attached them to the uh, fabric there, but they're not actually structural. From the inside, they look like they're structural and from the shots, when you see them in the background, it looks like it's part of the tent and that's what's actually holding it up, but it's just an aesthetic piece. If you're trying to do a scene like this and it's very visual, getting all of these props right and making sure you have plenty of art direction is key to making the scene get sold so they really believe that it's happening and it's not just a stage setup. 
So that's basically all of the set dressings and the props that we used. Now let's get into some of the video gear. Starting with the camera setup, we were using the Red Epic W. This has the 8K helium sensor. We're shooting with the Rokinon Zine cinema lenses. This is the 50 millimeter, and we also have the 24 millimeter. These are basically the two focal lengths that we used for all of the shots that were in this. We're also shooting on 8K so we could punch in a little bit if we needed to, but I really liked how both of these focal lengths played with each other. Attached to the lens, we have a bright tangerine misfit atom matte box, and then we have some Lee ND filters in there, and that's so we could open up, and we also needed to have this light bright enough to compete with these two practicals that you can see where we're getting some really nice atmosphere actually right now. And then we could open up enough so we weren't stopped down to like a 5.6. I think for the most part, we played around like a 2.28 on these lenses. As for a camera rig, this was pretty much our full setup. I went handheld with everything, so we didn't use any tripods, we didn't use any easy rigs or dollies. This was our full setup for the whole shot with those two lenses. Next thing is gonna be our audio setup, which I have set up outside. For our main audio, we were using the Roadlink Filmmaker Kit live set that was going into our Tascam. And then we also had a shotgun mic with an NTG microphone on it going through the boom pole right into that Tascam as well. And then we had somebody monitoring it outside of the room. And then the last thing that we're gonna take a look at is the lighting, which is my favorite part. Now in here, we had one light panels Gemini up above sort of emulating these two practicals, which are giving us some really nice light beams and we had some LEDs in there. So we're getting some really good atmosphere with the haze. On this light panels, just so we weren't getting a spill everywhere, we threw on some cardboard boxes and we just taped it to it instead of getting barn doors, which are really expensive. This is a nice, easy DIY hack, especially with these types of LEDs that run really cold. You don't have to worry about them burning the cardboard when you tape it to it like this. And then just to emulate this color, we have the light panels set to 3200 and it's only at about 25 percent so we have a lot more output with this light if we needed it but we were already using nds so it's just enough to overpower these lights so when we stop down we're getting these to a good exposure level and we're getting enough fill on all of our talent and then the other light that we used is just this light panels gemini out here bouncing into our white psych to give us a nice little bit of light from here when our talent was walking in from this direction like you saw at the beginning of the video so that's pretty much it for this setup. I'm super psyched on how this came out and had a really fun time shooting it. If you guys wanna see more about specifics of like a lighting breakdown, I'm gonna be doing some of those and I'll link to them in the description when they're done. If you wanna see all the gear that I talk about too, as well as some of the link to the prop places and the set stuff, I'll put that in the description below. If you guys have any questions about why we did stuff the way we did, or any questions about ideas or things that you're trying to do, let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoy these types of videos and you wanna see more of them, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button, subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one. Also a big shout out to New Sky Productions. If you guys wanna check out more of their work, that's gonna be linked to in the description. See you guys next time.